What is going on guys? It is your boy Cash and we are here today to go over Ronald. He is Natsu's cousin. I mean guys, I never knew, you know, the family lineage of Natsu from Fairy Tale, but I'm so happy that not only does he have a relative, but he's from a completely different game. You guys gotta really be appreciative that, you know, that Nice Chronicles dug so deep to find the family members of an anime character. So this is gonna be like a Renald guide with a little bit of a Natsu, but I'm not gonna bring up the, the collab character as much as I did with Chavi because honestly, this will be the last character <laughs> build guide of a new character you'll see if it's another duplicate character. And one thing before I actually get into this lovely guide of this character, I just wanted to show you guys this real quick thing about some new content that's coming up into the channel. There it is, guys. Finally got the Pokemon going. Well, not Pokemon Go, but this is Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, finally got my capture card and all that other good stuff. So we're going to have some Pokemon content coming up pretty soon. If you guys happen to play Pokemon as well, I don't know if anyone is part of that life. Let me know what you guys would like to see if you are a Pokemon fan. Like you want character, well not character guys, specific Pokemon guys. You want battles. Battles are going to come regardless, right? Um, I'm very competitive. But now you guys can actually see that because i never shown really arena stuff that much. I've shown a little bit of guild, a little arena. But this game I'm very competitive in, so you guys should look forward to that. Um, took me a while to get everything, but I'm ready to go. First off, we're going to go with the, the outfit. What you thought? You saw the mouse going down here? It's like, no. First of all, start off with the outfit. Now, he's in this gray. The gray kind of looks kind of good, I think. With like Anubis. That looks kind of good. The, the, the brown bronze kind of thing going on. And then here it is. It just looks better. Samurai kind of thing. Oh, you see the clouds on the... Oh, no, that was always there. Okay, so it came in at five and then go down and the plants turn black okay i see you play it what happens to the okay this doesn't change the little apple doesn't change at all okay and he also looks if we if i was actually said so it's not to his cousin and it's like abel's older brother <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like so the leader skill as you guys know is increased allies damage dealt to enemies with damage over time by 70 percent and also has an increased allies attack by 30 percent if morgan is in the party now i have not read the lore and i I really don't care to to even fathom why they have that and also why by 30% is like attached to each other <laughs> come on guys if you're gonna rush out content <laughs> at, least, at least spell check it Jesus but outside of that it's you know it's nice that Morgan gets a little boost but are you going to ever see him as a leader I highly doubt it honestly be better to use Morgan's because you give the leader skill to the character that has the best survivability plus good leader skill I've said this many of times and I'll say it again. Your leader skill goes away when the character dies. So if Renal dies, your leader skill goes away. Meanwhile, Morgan, with all her bull that she has with her, she's gonna stay alive for a long time. So it's a little bit better to use her. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's go over these passive skills to see if he has the survivability to make me change my mind. First passive, Fox in Love, 100% chance to burn two enemies for 30% of the, why did I read that? At the start of the turn, start of his turn, by the way. Increases all allies attack by 40% for one turn if the if attacking enemies with damage over time. This is amazing, and it's always been amazing because he puts burns on, on two characters, and if you target them in any way, shape, or form, at least, you know, he'll start boosting everyone's attack. And it goes for any damage over times and not just the initial burns that he started off with. This is great for any characters that have bleeds, ebon wounds, poison so it synergizes really well with the current meta of the game where you know crows there's always going to be a dot somewhere somewhere on somebody as long as he's attacking that character he's going to be in a good spot the next one is the fox's revenge activates resolve for one turn by the way resolve for one turn is the good resolve it's the annoying pesky one that you're going to need rebecca or taroni to make sure that it goes away at a respectable time reset skill threes cooldown and receives debuff immunity for one turn when resolve is activated once per battle increases damage dealt by 60 percent to enemies with damage over time if you combine both of them that's a lot of damage that will happen for damage over time i would have to do a lot of voodoo math to see if it's worth it overall to have him as a leader but he does have the he does have the resolve i i kind of knew that i was trying to spice it up for you guys i still don't think he's worth being a leader i think he's just gonna get popped if i'm being honest remember he doesn't have any of that abnormal status immunity so if you anti-resolve him yes he's going to die he doesn't have the protection like some of the other characters do 
And this is his S1, the Foxfire. It's a single target hit, but it has a chance to do damage to the target again. So it's like a double hit to the target and then do a, a cone attack, which is really weird. I've been noticing that. I didn't know exactly what that was. It was really weird. And that hit, that the 60% hit and the cone has a chance to burn as well. So as you can see, we level it up here. And eventually, no, does it go? Yes. No, it does not go to 100%, 90% to do that. And that's pretty good. Is it the best thing? I don't know. Let's check the S2 out. Fox Flame inflicts damage equal to, why am I reading this? Cone attack, 70% chance to apply the blaze. And it has a chance to remove all buffs. And that's good that it has a chance to remove buffs from the get go. You don't need to level it up to do anything. This skill, I think you could probably leave alone. It's just extra damage in the blaze, as you can see. But the blaze starts off at 70. That's pretty good s3 is exercise it's a single target nuke that ignores defense we love that and some revive unavailable as well inflicts 30 percent additional damage if the target hp is 50 percent higher which is really good for straight out nuking and we can see that it becomes 100 percent at level six inflicts 70 percent additional damage if the target hp is higher now we know how important revive unavailable is and we know how good ignore defense is so if I were to suggest, I would go S3, S1, S2. S2, like I said, already has its utility from the get-go. He's a good character. There's no reason not to kind of summon for him. He's just another good character, a fire attacker. We've seen 18,000 of them. It's kind of why Verdandi started running amok. <laughs> And Verdandi would counter this character as well, but this is why a lot of the water characters, you know, you need them to kind of balance out all these fire attackers that come out that are usually very strong, have really strong kits. He's a little bit pesky with the resolve, but without further ado, I think it's best to just go into how you would gear him. But first, before you know how to gear him, you need to see the base stat. Now we already know that he's an SSR attacker. He's gonna have the same stats outside of the attack speed, which is gonna be 579 again we just did morgan so he has the same attack speed as her so that's pretty good you can make him go first i would suggest that you do so so let's go straight over to the runes mine's rune very well empty 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 because he's so overpowered and I'm, you guys know of course i'm gonna have to mention the rune of burst he also has a guarantee to put a burn on two enemies every time his turn comes up so there will always be someone he can hit to get the bonus from this and obviously with multi-strikes and counter-attacks you know if they happen that will be good. Agility is what I would kind of run him on just because I want him to go first. Specifically because his first passive, if he hits a target that has a damage over time, he gives damage to everyone. So while you're fishing for that ignore defense anti-revive, you're also gonna give damage to the rest of your cast. And we all know that Nice Chronicle is about pretty much a lot of the attackers. So giving attack boost to the rest of your team is really, really good. It's nothing to laugh at. And that's pretty much it outside of the Rune of Rage. The, you know, if you just wanted to do more damage, Rune of Rage, pretty basic stuff here. He's not that complicated of a character. You just give him the damage runes. I would suggest agility. He will pretty much autopilot himself. You just kind of S3 and then S2 if you see the buffs. Remember his S2, as long as there's some damage over time on those characters, you can use the S2 first. You can actually use it first is what I was meant to say. You can use it first if you know or need to take off some buffs from the characters. Remember, it removes all of them. It'll take off any pesky thing like the damage immunities, any buffs that they might have going on. Obviously, it won't take off protection, but that's a really good way if you want to make them go first to remove three characters buffs you can do that as well so i would say agility is probably your best bet hero talent your favorite so hero talent here we're gonna definitely go with weapon mastery second for 52 where are you gonna use him i don't think he's that good in arena i think that in arena that essence of him i guess if you're going the agility you're gonna use him in arena I still think that there's just crazy shit in arena and i don't know if he'll really be able to take a spot of an a6 character right now it's a6 heaven out there but if you're gonna bring in arena pvp you guys know pvp or pve here if he's gonna go in a boss dungeon he'll make some boss dungeons easy but the a6s make a lot of the boss dungeons very easy 54 we're gonna have to go with the defense i think because he doesn't have any real defensive mechanisms outside of his resolve uh, you could try to go burning weapon, but he has no multi striking or any counter attacking in his build. So I would go with fortified armor 56. Same thing. I would again, just go PVP or PVE. I wouldn't go grudge because I don't think he's going to last long enough to really make use of it. Planned attack because he has nothing to give him crit chance. And again, we don't go acute rage unless there's some way that you're mitigating damage or not taking any damage whatsoever. And 60, of course, is going to be 
duh. All right, here we are going to show off the lovely man himself. So right now we have the S1 that we're gonna show S2 and I'll give you a surprise. I've never really seen this S3. Let's look at the S1. Boom, nice and quick. Like I said, it does have a chance to be in a cone. I was using him in dungeons for the Black Friday boosty thing. And I was like, wait, he hit attacks in a cone? I don't think Natsu has that. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I'm also not gonna check. <laughs> Oh, there it is right there. He hit in the cone. Let's check out the S2, the Fox Flame, I think it's called. Yes, let's look at that. That looks just really too quick. And let's end it off with that patented S3 on the Ulton. Poor guy. Let's check out this, what is it? Extortion, exercise, extortion. Why did I just make up words? Exercise, let's see it. Bring it home, baby. Oh, he throws the ball up and it all becomes real. Wait, why did it jump? Wait, what? I need to look at this again. Did he jump behind the target? Whatever, that's weird. Anyway, what did you guys think about Ronald? Again, he's very similar to Natsu. So if you like Natsu, you're gonna like him. He has a little slight differences of what he can do. Just more based on he doesn't have to have the burn. It doesn't have to be all about burns. His stuff will trigger off damage over times instead, making him less restricted into other comps like Natsu and, and Roy were kind of restricted to only be part of, you know, burn teams and stuff. And he can kind of hang around with Ashley. He can hang around with Elizabeth. It's a better change overall for the character, the character that is Natsu, to be changed this way so that they can work with other team comps. So you could bring him in there in the fray of other strong arena characters, but I just don't think he's gonna be able to hang as well as if you just brought in Elektra, Rebecca, Morgan, Ramu. Morgan Ramu is probably the dumbest thing I've ever seen so far in the current meta. It's very, very hard to break. <laughs> you, you, it's really hard to kill Morgan if you have those two together because you can't anti-revive her whatsoever and then Rama will revive her and anyone else that you could not do. And then if you don't kill Morgan, she will kill you. So she's it's a very strong combo. It kind of counters a lot of shit out there. Oh yeah, and then it's the crazy combo. I should show you guys. Let me know if you want me to show you. It's uh, Ramu, Morgan, Adrian. Very strong. So that's gonna be it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the Spirit Fox Suitor, Ronald. And remember that every day at the casino is your lucky day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.